Hey, what's up folks? Welcome back to another Lair by Lair. In today's tutorial, we're gonna take a look at using the draft tool in Fusion 360. So let's jump right into it. It is Halloween season, and this is a really fun model by Liz Clark. She put together this Frankenstein head, and she's going to 3D print it. I took a look at it, and I was like, I think you can print this without support materials. So let's take a look at some of these features. So the ears here have some 90 degree angles, and if you were to 3D print these as is, uh, you're going to need a little bit of support ma support material uh, when you're 3D printing. Also, the 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 forehead here with the 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 classic uh, unibrow has some overhang uh, feature as well, and that is going to need uh, that could print okay, but I think we can mo optimize it a little bit better. And there's a really easy way to do that in Fusion 360, and it's called the draft feature. So under the modify window, you can see here draft is that's where it's hiding out. Roll over it just to get an idea of what it kind of does. Uh, so let's kind of jump into this one. I'm going to work on this left ear first, uh, my left. <laughs> so I'll bring up the design shortcuts using the S key on my keyboard, and I can just type in the draft word, D-R-A-F, and uh, there it is. I didn't even have to put the F. So the, now it, it wants you to select the pull direction and the face that you want. Uh, in my head, I really like to kind of think that way backwards. So I like to select the faces first because that's kind of what I want. I want to select the face that I want to fix, and it's this one right here under the ear. The next thing is I got to click on select for the pull direction, and we'll, we'll, we'll select different faces here, just an idea of uh, what is the right pull direction. So let's go ahead and select this one first. And you can see here right away, that's not quite the, uh, the, the pull direction we want, so let's uh, X that, and let's try this side. That is what we want, so that looks really good. And, and then you can see here the little dashed line. That gives you a clue as to where the kind of uh, the pivoting point is. And then this little handle here lets you adjust that. Uh, so by default, uh, it's zero, but uh, Fusion tends to remember the last values you entered, and I had just used it, so that's why it was at 30. And a little tip, if you hold down the Command key on Mac or Control on Windows, uh, if you hold that down, you can uh, toggle between a zero value and the value that you've added just to get an idea. And if you look very carefully, you can see your, the fillet here is actually adjusting slightly, and that's because it's trying to maintain tangency here uh, when, it's, uh, when it's affecting that. So that looks pretty good. Another thing you can click on is this right here. That's basically this, this little icon here, the arrow. That's basically clicking this icon here, the flip, the pull direction. So if you click on that, uh, it'll just invert that uh, value, kind of, or the direction, rather. And uh, for this one, we don't need that, so uh, I'm just letting you know that you can do that. So I'll hit OK. So after that, I, I really thought we could just apply a mirror uh, to, to that, uh, to this model, and that way we can kind of do it faster. But in my, if we do that, let's see what happens. There's, there's, it's always fun to kind of see, uh, to walk through something you know that's not gonna work, but let's try it anyway, right? So the idea is to let's use the mirror feature to mirror this, um, well, feature across this one here. So let's try to do that. But the first thing we need to do is to figure out what is the exact center of this model. And uh, the, the, the way to do that is you can use the construction uh, mid-plane. So under construct, there is this thing called mid-plane, and basically it lets you select two faces, and then it figures out what's the center of those two faces. So let's try it out. Midpoint, I'll select uh, the uh, left side of the head and then the right side of the head, and then you get this little, uh, little orange plane, and then we hit OK. You can uh, kind of move these edges around just to encompass the model for visual sakes, right? So you can see here, yeah, that's pretty smack dab in the center of our model. So let's go ahead and try to use this in our mirror. So I'll bring up the mirror command here, the mirror feature, and I got to select the object. So I'm going to select the draft we did. That's in the timeline there. And then I'll do mirror plane, select, and then select that plane. If we rotate around, Fusion kind of gives you a preview of that, and that looks like it would work OK. I hit OK, but look at that. Unexpected result. <laughs> Very strange. So just to let you guys know, uh, I, qu I haven't quite figured out why it's doing this or how to fix that. It just doesn't work sometimes. I found the mirror feature, it's kind of one of the flakiest features I've found. Uh, I've tried different compute options like optimized and identical, but it yields pretty much the same results. It just doesn't like it, right? So I'm going to delete that and delete these guys. Don't really need it, but I thought it'd be nice to give you that tip on, uh, on the mid plane, and that's where I would use that. Uh, but it didn't quite work out, and it's 
let me just delete that from the timeline. So in any case, it is easy enough to just apply another draft. So again, I'm gonna select face first and then select my actual face, change it up to the pull direction, and then we know that this is uh, gonna be a good pull direction. And then again, the value is 30, which is what I used last, so thanks for, for remembering Fusion. And I'll hit okay. All right, that worked out really well, except the mirror part, right? <laughs> Uh, and then the next thing is to do is uh, the, the unibrow here. So if we look, there's lots of rounded edges and fillets that are uh, happening. So let's, it'd be interesting to see how Fusion handles this. So let's go ahead and try it again. Draft. I'll do my face first. Select that face. And then the pull direction, which will be the front of the unibrow. And there it is. Very, very nice job. So if I, again, hold down Command on the Mac or Control on Windows, I can cycle can toggle between these two. You can see how much geometry is being affected here. Like the fillet is, is, is maintaining that tangency and it's just rounding it off so ever so nicely. And that looks pretty good. I'm gonna hit okay. And now that is pretty much all we need to do. If you look at the eyes, they, there is some overhang here, 90 degree overhangs. But because it is because of where the geometry is, it's pretty much gonna catch itself with these eye sockets. Uh, so that's all good. The nose, uh, it has such a, a a big fillet that that geometry is going to work as well. Also, the teeth, if you look on the inside, the teeth are actually already touching uh, kind of the previous layers, so that'll print out just fine as well. Um, so there you go. There is a nice and easy way to kind of optimize your features and your models in Fusion 360 uh, to uh, to have kind of some support-free 3D printing. I hope this inspires you guys to get into the holiday season and remember to stay safe out there. Let me know what you guys think of this one and I will see you in the next one. Until then, remember to make a great day. Bye folks.